Welcome to the channel, Annie Collins here. Today we're going to create this lovely spring card. Let's go over to some of the products I used to create this card. Our new mixed media stencil called Stained Glass Garden. It has a sun, a field, some clouds, and it's actually a mask for your sun if you, need to, if you would like to use that. Our stamp set is called Bunny Hugs. This is a 35 piece set, but we're going to use this little bunny, a field of florals, and a sentiment that reads, hopping by to say, hi we're going to use our aqua pigment watercolors we're going to use white yellow green turquoise orange and our chroma mist and bumblebee yellow we're going to be using our aqua pigment watercolor paper for this project and it works perfectly with our aqua pigment our new stick and stamp pigment mat well, pigment palette, I should say. And then our stick and stamp mat. We're going to use our Raven Detail Ink to stamp our sentiment. To save us some time, I went ahead and have our papers cut. So we have our aqua pigment, aqua pigment watercolor, layering cardstock, and it's like Robin Eggy blue color, and a card base made from the Not Your Mama's, water, not your mama's cardstock. Um, I went ahead and stamped and colored all our images and cut them out. We have our bunny, our florals, and I also have some acrylic bubbles for finishing touches. So now let's go ahead and get started. We're going to start with our aqua pigment watercolor paper, our stencil, our pigment palette, and our stick and stamp mat. This pigment palette has a little spot for all the colors that you may need. And some extra spots that are just in black and those are perfect for when you mix colors so it just sticks to the top of your mat but i'm going to move mine off because i'm going to stick my cardstock down first our watercolor paper i should say i'll stencil on top of that and i'm not needing anything else to hold my stencil down because our stick and stamp mat will hold my stencil in place just going to press it into the mat and then i'll place my uh pigment palette on the top. I also have some water, two brushes, and a, a bigger one and a little detail one so that we can paint our background. All right, so I'm gonna start by placing some, a few drops of each of our colors in the appropriate little color circle. So I have my yellow, green, and the green. So my white, I'm just gonna just put it here in the black because there isn't a white section, but hey, you know. And then I'm gonna put a little bit of the turquoise in the blue here and these are aqua pigments come with little droppers so I just squeeze like one or two drops until each of the little sections you can always add more I'd rather have a few drops and then continue to add rather than have too much now I do not have aqua pigment in yellow as of yet so that's why I brought in the chroma mist and bumblebee yellow so I'm using the little nozzle uh, star or whatever you call that on the inside and I'm just going to use that for my dropper. I'm just going to put a few drops of that onto the yellow section of my palette. I'm going to wet my brush because I want my brush to be wet, but I don't want it to be soaking wet. So I have a paper towel off to the side where I just take any extra liquid out. I'm going to start with green. And I started first on wet on dry, and I didn't like the way it was going on. So I then went ahead and added water to my aqua pigment watercolor and then I'll bring in the pigment it just blends better that way I'm going to mix a little bit of the turquoise with my green just to give a little different uh, I guess shadowing to my grassy area so I'm going to go ahead and add the green on top of that turquoise <clears throat> and I just keep adding more if I need more of the aqua pigment so I'm going to go ahead and blend a little bit more just to give like I said, some shadowing in, to our grassy area. Now that our grassy area is done, I'm sorry, I have a little fuzzy here, so I'm going to grab my tweezers and get it off. I guess I had a fuzzy in my brush. All right, so any extra water, I just use my napkin or my paper towel, actually, to sop up any of the excess water. 
So now I'm going to go ahead and use a little bit of water for my sun area. And I start out with the chrome mist in the bumblebee yellow. And then I add a little bit of the aqua pigment in the orange. And I keep blending them until I get the color I, I'm desiring. Now with the, with the chrome mist, it's so much harder to get that little nozzle than it is to the, chrome, the aqua pigment. So I just went ahead and decided to open. Got brave here, people got brave. Open my bottle and stick my brush into it just to get a little bit more yellow. And I just dab off any excess onto my palette. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill in the area with the, as much yellow as possible. Adding bits of green, bits of green, I'm sorry, bits of orange in there to create some shadowing and dimension to our sun. And then I finish it off with a nice coat of the yellow. Again, using my paper towel to dab up any excess water because I don't want this to be too, soaked, too soaking wet and to seep under my stencil. A little bit is okay, but I didn't want a whole lot. So I continue to do this till I get my sun how I want it and my sun rays. Once I have that to the desired color, I'm going to move on to our clouds. For our clouds, I'm going to use the white aqua pigment to fill it in and then I'll pull in just a hint of this turquoise just to add a little extra dimension towards the bottom of our clouds just like a little blue peeking through <coughs> so I'm going to go ahead excuse me I'm going to go ahead and keep mixing that until I have it how I would like it now normally I would use any of the extra aqua pigment on my palette but for this video purposes I just wiped it off now I'm going to remove my palette just by curling my stick and stamp mat and I also remove my card panel here. So I'm going to close everything up, make sure it's all out of my way and then I'm going to bring in my heat tool and heat set this. It's not really that wet but I want to make sure it's fully dry because I'll be stamping our sentiment right into the sun area. So I'm going to heat it from the front and from the back. This will add some curling to my card panel, but I solved that issue with some uh, stick, no, some tear tape. Oh my goodness. I stick it down with some tear tape and some liquid adhesive. So now, once I have this fully dry, get this last little bit right back here because I know it's a little wet by the sun. Then I realized I got a little green in my sun. I'm, when I flipped it over, I must have that had a little pigment on the um, on my table but before I fix my sun I'm going to trim this down to four by five and a quarter once I have that down because I want a little edge to show all the way around of that little robin egg blue um, layering cardstock so this is when I realize huh I have smidgen of green right there in my sun so I'm going to go ahead and grab my <clears throat> Chroma Mist in the Bumblebee Yellow, get my brush, and I'm just going to add a little bit of that Chroma Mist right on top to blend it out. Now, I could have left it because my sentiment goes right over it and you w wouldn't have seen it, but I wanted to make sure you didn't. I didn't know that at the time. <laughs> you know, I thought, oh, that's going to show through. And why would there be green in my sun? So I'm going to go ahead and heat set that. Then I'll be going to bring in our sentiment, which is hopping by to say hi. And I'm going to bring in my stamping platform. I'll stick my stick and stamp mat into my stamping platform. I'll place my card panel on here. And as you can see, I don't have to use anything to hold it down because the mat does that for me. I just use the magnets to hold my mat down. <laughs> All right, so now I'm going to put my sentiment to the right section of the sun. I moved it down so I can see if I'm straight because with my camera rigging, you would just see my head in a way. I don't think you want to look at the back of my head. All right, so I'm bringing in my Raven Detail ink. I'm going to ink up our sentiment. And I'll stamp this three times because I want a nice dark, crisp uh, sentiment here. And um, this is watercolor paper. It's not super detailed, but still aqua pigment. Watercolor paper is watercolor paper. And so 
Hmm, excuse me. And so I will stamp it three times so I have a nice black sentiment. And this is a solid sentiment. So we want to make sure it's nice and filled in. Once I have that all set, we will continue to uh, make, make our card. So I'm going to curl my mat to release my card panel. <coughs> And now I'm going to make sure that it fits nicely onto my Robin Egg Blues um, linen cardstock, and it does. So I'm going to bring in my tear tape here. I'll flip my panel over and adhere some of this tear tape to the back of my panel. And I do this, and then I also add some liquid uh, uh, adhesive. I use some Verily Art glue so that I have some wiggle room to make sure that my panel is centered correctly. So I'm going to remove the, the backing of this uh, tape here. And I have it on all four um, ends and then one strip down the center. I have a little issue right here. Okay. So now I'm going to go ahead and bring in my art, my barely art glue. And I'll put some uh, adhesive on the back of this panel. And then I'll place this onto my robin egg layering cardstock. I start one way and I realize, oh, I'm off. So then I just go and reset it. Like I said, I want a nice little frame all the way around. So once I place that down, as you can see, we have minimal curling. <coughs> so now we're going to adhere this panel onto our card base. And again, this is a A2 sorry card, which is four and a quarter by five and a half. And I'm going to adhere this to the card base, which I made from the Not Your Mama cardstock. Okay, so now I'm going to bring in our little elements here. And this first uh, foam tab is from British Monroe, and it has these little, like, little handle to peel it off. I love it. I need to get more of that. The rest of the foam tabs are just regular foam tabs and they're a little more difficult to remove. I mean, you know, if you have nails, it wouldn't be so bad, but I have really short nails. But the ones with the little foam, the little tab, so easy, so great. All right, so I have my little bunny set there to the left-hand side. And now I'm gonna put a little cluster of florals right here on our little field. So I have a total of four, two yellows, and a little uh, pink one, and then a little purpley one. Now to finish off our project, I'm going to add some of our acrylic bubbles. So I add one to the bottom left and two to the top right up here by the sun. And I put the green ones on the top just to move some of that green upwards to break up some of that sun uh, yellow up there. And then I put a yellow one towards the bottom over here by our bunny. There's some blue ones there. I was going to put one, but it was slightly different color blue. It's more blue blue, where this is more of a turquoise blue that he has on his uh, little bow and um, the layering cardstock. Okay, so their project is complete. So we have our clouds, a fun field, a nice deep sentiment, and our cute little bunny waving hi to you. And I colored my images using Copic markers, and I'll have those listed as well. So here we use our stick and stamp mat, a pigment mat, a, hop, a bunny hugs stamp set, the stained glass garden a stencil, some aqua pigments, and our chroma mist and bumblebee yellow, our raven detail ink, and of course our acrylic bubbles. And I can't, can't forget our aqua pigment watercolor. But like always, I'll have everything listed in the description box below, which links to the Bruce Monroe shop. Thank you for being here, and I hope you found some inspiration.